Once upon a time, there was a miller, his daughter, and her son. They were a humble family of little income. However, the miller wished to be of a higher social status within the kingdom. One day, he took matters into his own hands and approached the king. Why do you approach me, peasant? Please, your majesty, I have something that might intrigue you. What is it? It's my daughter. She can spin straw into gold. Really? This is an art that pleases me. I present to you my daughter. But father! She can show you now. If this is true, I'll take you to my room full of straw and you can turn that into gold. Magically, his daughter was supposed to spin straw into plentiful golden string. Unlikely was it that his daughter, who had barely lifted a finger from her storybooks, would be able to accomplish such a feat. It's not that the daughter was overly privileged, she was just even too lazy to eat. This was peculiar, seeing as the miller and his daughter were so poor. So naturally, prestige and recognition is what the miller longed for. But it was the miller's own daughter whom he gave up to chance, his family and fame doing a fatal dance. Now that his daughter had been locked away, how will the miller fare she were to die on this day? That was the consequence offered by the king if the daughter could not fulfill her father's offer. But what if more of a reward was given to the daughter than the miller if she were to prosper? How am I supposed to do this? This is an impossible task to complete. I don't want to lose my life. Good evening, Mistress Miller. Why are you weeping so? I have to spin straw into gold and I don't know how. What will you give me if I do it? I'll give you my mother's necklace. The little man took the necklace and sat down at the wheel and whiz, 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 three times round the spool was full. Then he inserted another one and whiz, 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 the second was full. And so it went until all the straw was spun and all the spools were filled with gold. <gasps> oh no, it's the king. I must go. This man, without known identity, did what the daughter could not do. He spun all of the straw into gold in the first test he got her through. Her necklace was one small price to pay to escape with her life and to see another day. A stranger was this man to the girl, but dying seemed to be a worse fate than allowing him to twirl. But it was not just any necklace that the daughter did defer. It was her deceased mother's necklace and the very last connection to her. And foolish is she to think one gift will satisfy the stranger's greed. After all, he knows that he has the power the daughter needs. As long as the man can spin straw into gold, he will be back two times, three times, four. Will the daughter sacrifice her life if the man were to ask for something she so deeply adores? Wow, I'm pleased that your talents are true. I'm glad I pleased you, Your Majesty. You must spin this into gold tonight. If you can, you must become my wife. Your wish is my command. Oh no, where is that little man when I need him? You called? I need you to spin this straw into gold once more. What will you give me if I do? I have nothing left to give. Then if I do this for you, you have to give me your child. No, something living is far more precious to me than all the treasures in the world. Feeling pity for her wretched soul, the little man made a proposition with her. I'll give you three hours time. If you can guess my name by the third hour, you can keep your child. The little man spun the straw into gold once more. The king was so impressed with the daughter's golden contribution that if she could spin more straw into gold, he would join her in a marriage union. In the utmost of greed, the man asked for the daughter's firstborn child in exchange for his assistance. Accepting his offer would ensure the daughter a life of leisure, but the thought of giving up her very own child caused her resistance. Even still, the daughter continued in the negotiation. Instead of declining the man's help, she gave in to temptation. If she could not spin straw into gold, by what magical force would the daughter be able to guess the man's name? By continuing to bargain with the stranger, the daughter could get her happily ever after, but at the price of the child, she won't claim. You must be very pleased to become my queen. The wedding's now. I'll be very honored to become your wife. They were wed quickly and soon. The lowly miller's daughter became queen. Everything in my castle is to your heart's desire. I have to go to attend the business now. Of course, Your Majesty. Goodbye. Just a reminder. You have two more hours. Good luck. What 
can I do? How will I ever be able to find his name when there are so many names in the kingdom? Someone, please fetch the messenger. Yes, my queen? Please search the castle to inquire for all of the names. It's an emergency. Of course, my queen. I will do it now. Now if the daughter was queen and the kingdom was hers to claim, she could not enjoy her newfound life for she had to worry about discovering the man's name. The daughter sacrificed her valuables and her dignity to the glutton. He gave her an impossible task and wants to take away her child. He will stop at nothing. Still, the daughter could have stopped the stranger's request when she gave him the necklace and cleared the king's first test. At that point, she would have not become queen, but she would have made it out alive. Here, my queen, these are all the names I found throughout the castle. Thank you very much. You are dismissed. I bet you're just as clueless as you were before. Is it Casper? Melchior? Roast beef? Mutton chops? No, that's not my name. Nice try. You have one more hour. If you don't have it by then, I will have your child. Someone, please fetch the messenger. Yes, my queen? I need you to search the castle and gather more names. Please return within an hour. It's very urgent. Of course, my queen. The messenger searched and searched. He did not have any luck until he searched in the castle's forest and found the answer. My queen, I have searched and searched. What names have you found for me? Just one. When I was walking in the forest to the castle, I came upon a house, and in front of the house was a fire. And around the fire, there was a ridiculous little man. He hopped on one leg and shouted, Today I'll brew, tomorrow I'll bake, soon I'll have the queen's name sake. How fun it is to play my game for rumple still skin is my name. Thank you. You've been a great help. You are dismissed now. What's my name, Your Majesty? Is your name Rumpelstiltskin? The devil told you. In his the anger, devil told he you. plunged his foot so deep into the earth that his whole leg went in, and then in rage, he pulled at his left leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself in two. The messenger returned with a list of names, none of which belonged to the little man. So he was sure that he had won, and the queen's firstborn child would surely land in his hands. The man yelled as he gloated, so very high was his chin. It was while he was drowning in arrogance that the messenger discovered his name to be Rumpelstiltskin. Anger and gluttony is what tore Rumpelstiltskin in two. He abused his power, and his ego grew. Rumpelstiltskin knew the daughter needed him, and it was unlikely for her to solve this riddle. Only so much selfishness and vanity can fit into one person, so poor Rumpel had to be split down the middle. Compensation for one's work is far from too much to ask, but the punishment for an excessively greedy request should not be anything but rash.